Hi, my name is Christine Rustino, and I teach Italian with the Department of French and Italian at Emory University. And my name is Hong Li. I teach Chinese in the Department of Russian and East Asian Languages and Cultures at Emory University. Thank you, Hong. We are presenting today a transformative learning approach supporting reflections in foreign language curriculum. And today we'll be focusing mostly on the concept of structured reflections. A structured reflection just means thinking about and evaluating your experiences in a way that leads to positive change and growth. And the teachers give students prompts and we're the ones who structure the actual reflection for the students. Next slide, please. In, so Stephen Brookfield articulated most recently in his book in 2012, Teaching for Critical Thinking, Tools and Techniques to Help Students Question Their Assumptions. He was a scholar of adult education and he regards the ability to quote, see things from different viewpoints as one of the four processes that comprise the construct of critical thinking. Next slide. It's worth pointing out that the construction of perspective and perspective shifting is not new to foreign language teaching or foreign language education. In fact, we try to do this all the time in our classes. Models of intercultural learning, for example, Michael Brem's model, make mention of perspective shifting while the world readiness standards accord perspective a major role among the three Ps in its framework for teaching culture. However, the approach we bring today considers perspective from a broad educational position, one not solely tied to cultural content as part of a curriculum, but rather one that speaks to perspective making from a wider holistic lens that involves individual personal development and when I think of this, I think of co-constructing knowledge with your students where students arrive with a certain amount of knowledge and when they go to classes or when they learn something new, they often have to deconstruct and reconstruct their knowledge base, but in a different way. Next slide, please. To go deeper into this idea, I'm going to employ Jordan Francis who wrote a paper reconceptualizing the native speaker. Um, and this more holistic approach takes into account the identity of both the student and the culture he or she is studying. Jordan Francis in his article in Academia called Reconstructing the Native Speaker in 2019 talks about how the field has recognized the need to make learners demonstrate a pragmatic or it's often called intercultural communicative competence as opposed to transforming them into native speakers. Interculturality as a pedagogical approach aims to enable learners to accept that people integrate rather than assimilate into a culture. Thus, students maintain their own unique identities when interacting with others while also learning and respecting cultural laws and values of the culture they're studying and reflecting on the human condition in a much more culturally informed way. Through this process, they're able to reflect on their own assumptions and experiences. And through new experiences with the target culture, they're able to reconceptualize their beliefs and integrate new information into their identities and belief systems. Next slide. This relationship is captured well in Anderson and Cunningham's 2009 graphic. The arrows represent moments of guided reflection by the teacher that connect these different spheres of knowing. And oftentimes, again, this, this is through a prompt that the teacher might create to ask the students to reflect in a different way. As students reflect on moments when these different ways of knowing are different or discordant, they are in a position to experience rich perspective transformation in a co-constructed manner. Next slide. 
So now that you know the type of reflection we ask our students to do, I'm going to hand the program over to my colleague, Hong Lee, who will speak about Chinese studies and how Chinese studies at Emory utilize structured reflection in their classes. Thank you, Christine. So next, I'm going to present uh, a project on structured reflection in Chinese 101 class in the fall semester of 2018. Uh, we had six, 67 students in the class. And the focus of student reflection is on their experience and their assumption about learning Chinese and the Chinese characters. We assigned three reflectional reflection journals, which is 5% of the total grade. The first journal focuses on the examination of students' assumptions about learning Chinese and characters. And the second one moves the focus to um, examining those assumptions after they have learned Chinese for about a month. And the last reflection focusing on evaluating the learning process and considering their educational value of learning Chinese. So for prompt one, we had three questions. The first question is about what assumptions or notions um, the students have about Chinese language. And the second, second question is what assumptions or notions about Chinese characters that the students might have. And in the last question, we we'll ask, ask the students to explain what they hope to learn and do with Chinese language and the Chinese characters by taking this course. The second uh, prompt, we ask the students to circle back to the assumptions that they have mentioned in the first journal and then to dig deeper into their learning experience and uh, reflect on whether they have gained the new sites and whether they have shifted their initial perspectives through the learning of uh, Chinese language in the first month. And the last one, we also have three questions. The first question is asking how has uh, learning Chinese characters evolved in the past two months, which is assigned towards the end of this um, semester. Second question, how do you view the connections between pr pronunciation and Chinese characters, character components and characters and the characters and words? Um, what do those connections mean to you? And the last question is, how has the experience of learning Chinese and characters affected your general attitude, motivation, and overall goals for learning Chinese? Um, going back to the reflection journals written by the students, we were able to identify a few uh, themes. The first theme comes from their assumptions, which is generally about the difficulty of learning Chinese. For example, the uh, words and expressions that are frequently used by the students include very hard, very difficult, Im impossible to learn, way too confusing, weird lines, and so on. But we also see appreciation for Chinese characters, such as um, they describe them as beautiful, fascinating to learn, and so on. Um, in the journals, we do see a lot of narratives about the shifting of their perspectives. Um, the word, however, is used quite frequently in their reflective journals. Okay. Students say that learning Chinese would not be as hard as I thought it would be. 
because the course at Emory provides multiple resources that aid students in, in learning the new language. Um, this student said my initial assumption was it was hard and challenging to learn. And as of now, I would still say the same. However, as I continue to go to Chinese events, Chinese conversation tables, peer mentoring sessions, I have realized that Chinese is more manageable to learn. Um, we also have narratives talking about, I was concerned that the majority of the words sound very similar. However, I can now see that the language is very contextual. Um, so even though it may sound similar, you can still decipher what is being meant by the nature of the conversation. Um, so this is in this narrative, the student specifically mentioned how uh, his perception of learning Chinese has been complete, completely transformed through what the, the interaction with the teacher and then how that changed his approach for learning Chinese. Um, this is another narrative about how the student now takes pride in knowing many characters, even though it is a challenging experience. Okay. Um, this student mentioned that learning Chinese has provided me with a new perspective on linguistics. Okay. So um, this is another example of how their perspective has shifted. Another theme that we are able to observe in the students' um, reflection journals is connection making. We see that students were able to connect characters and finding patterns through radicals and the phonetic components of the characters. Uh, one student said that some characters borrow another character's sound and does have familiar visual appearance. Okay. I try to memorize new words by using parts from the words I already knew. The best way for me to memorize is to associate them with their related words and create a story within the different strokes. So the character here is xiao, which means school. But the student said, I imagine two children holding hands next to a tree at school. Learning pronunciation and their correlations to parts of characters is crucial to learning the language in a holistic way. Um, so those observations are very important because unlike in English, there is no direct connection between how the words are written and how they are pronounced. So being able to connect the meanings of the characters and how they are pronounced is very important, especially at the initial stage um, of learning Chinese. Students were able to connect Chinese classes in with their daily lives. My roommate and I try to add Chinese into our daily lives. I text my friends in Chinese and talk to them in Chinese to help strengthen the Chinese I have learned in class. And here we see that students are also making connections between what they learn in the class and outside of the class. Um, students also watch Chinese movies and interviews of Chinese celebrities and to train their uh, experience, train their ability to comprehend Chinese uh, and also to recall what they learn in the class. Connection making also goes um, also includes connecting with family and friends. I've been texting in Chinese with a close friend and it makes her very happy that I can say so many things. 
And we see students texting their mother in Chinese and putting the chapter into good news, uh, good use. A few weeks ago, I actually managed to have a primitive conversation with a Chinese friend. Um, as my understanding of Chinese grow, I feel more and more connected with my family through the inclusion of just a few words in my day-to-day -day conversation. Students are also connecting with Chinese culture and the activities that we organize in the Chinese program. Um, so students are trying to read the subtitles in Chinese movies, and they really enjoyed trying very hard to, to hear what they have learned in the class and to recognize them while watching Chinese movies. The third, the third theme that we find in the class is that students have multiple strategies for learning Chinese characters. Um, this is a summary of them. So if uh, anyone is interested, feel free to take a closer look at them. Okay. So as the instructor of the class, um, I feel that one valuable point about using structured reflections is to make learning visible because we know students are learning, but usually they don't articulate it. And the journals provide a way for us to really see that. Uh, we can see, for example, students are shifting their perspectives as they are exposed to Chinese language and culture. We can also see their struggles and delights, their sense of accomplishments as they gain more proficiency in the language. We can see how their learning strategies have evolved. Um, I think based on what the students told us in their journals, to be a successful language learner, the key is to really apply the language you are learning into your daily lives. And also try to make connections with people, with teachers, classmates, friends, family. So the learning of languages is not confined in the classroom. And we want the stud students need to be uh, aware of their, their own learning experiences to understand what is working for them and what is not working for them. Um, so those are some of the benefits that the students have mentioned. First, structured reflections provide a space for students to reflect on their learning. Second, structured reflection serve as a tool for students to understand their own learning. And um, students also had some uh, reservations about how we assigned this project. There is a mention for, for the project to be optional and one student said, although it's a good idea, I feel that different questions should be asked, such as what do you hope to get out of this class? How is your learning style impacted by this class? Those are really good questions. Um, another student said the, the journals give her a brief pause. However, I didn't see the point of writing them. Um, so the reaction overall is very positive, uh, positive uh, but we do see um, there is area for improvement. Okay. And this chart just shows how we assess student, uh, student writings. For example, this is an answer that the student provided. 
So we look at whether students really addressed the questions that we asked in the prompt, whether students provided specific examples to illustrate their um, perspective, whether students try to make connections between their experiences and outside experiences, and also whether their writing is clear and comprehensible. So that concludes our presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out to us through email. Thank you so much. Thank you.